this is chromophobe. And here we have a primer on colorblindness, Colorblind 101. I have five minutes to tell you everything you need to know about colorblindness and five more minutes for other crap. Altogether, we're gonna cover six topics, color theory, biology, types, variants of CVD, genetics, testing, and the enchroma glasses. Three, two, one, go. You have two eyes. Your eyes detect light. What is light? Electromagnetic radiation. Scary! Oh, but it's the good kind of radiation. What's the difference between the good and bad kinds of electromagnetic radiation? Wavelength. Gamma rays, short wavelength. Bad. Microwaves, long wavelength. Better. And right in the middle, we have what we call in Canada, visible light as does the rest of the world. The light that comes from the sun or from a standard light bulb is white light. And that means that it's a pretty even mixture of all the different wavelengths that we can see. When this mixture of waves hits our retina, a bunch of molecules are excited and our brain thinks, ooh, white light. Maybe I should stop staring at the sun. But what if the light just contains some wavelengths? What if we put the white light through a prism, separate all the different wavelengths out, like Pink Floyding, as I say, and then we look at only the wavelengths that are in the middle of what we can see. Now, if you're a seal, you still see white light because you're a monochromat. But if you're a normal human, your brain recognizes this is just the middle of what I can see. This isn't white light. It's different. I should remember that this is different. I'm going to call this 600 nanometer light orange or uh, or or ronga orange. Why is it useful? Well, how else would you be able to differentiate between a tiger and a zebra? Besides um, size and, and shape and sound and all the other ways. Uh, so light hits your retina and it excites your cones. You have three types of cones and one rod, which together means you have four types of opsins, which are all the molecules that can react to light. Your rods are super sensitive and therefore work better in low light conditions such as when you're lying in bed at 3 a.m. trying to figure out where life did you wrong. And your cones are less sensitive, which means they work in brighter light, such as when you're lying in bed at 3 p.m. trying to figure out where life did you wrong. The three cones are called the L, M, and S cones, which is short for Larry, Moe, and Shemp. Don't do a Three Stooges reference, my wife says. You'll alienate your audience. Well, joke's on her. I don't have an audience. Each of these options loves getting lit by a certain wavelength of, of light. Uh, Larry prefers 570 nanometer light, whereas Shemp is okay with 430 nanometers because Shemp has low expectations. For every wavelength of light, our stooges get excited to different degrees. We see this as yellow, this as green, and this as blue. And for every ratio of excitation between the stooges determined in something called the opponent process, your brain will interpret a different color. If we have a complex combination of wavelengths instead of a single wavelength, it still has to first be simplified into those three variables. And so despite this, this, and this all being completely different spectra, we see them all identically as orange because they excite our three cones in the same ways. Three stooges means essentially a three-dimensional color space, and therefore, we call these people trichromats, or normies. Don't call us normies. Dear normies, whenever you find out that your friend or colleague is colorblind and you feel the urge to ask them what color your scarf is, just remember that they will tell you whatever answer you want to hear in order to get you to stop asking what color things are. Sincerely, Protan. But back to the stooges. If you're missing one of these cones, you are what's called a dichromat, meaning two. Because there's three cones and you can be missing any one of them, there are three types of dichromacy called protonopia when you're missing Larry, deuteronopia when you're missing Mo, and tritonopia when you're missing Shemp. Being a protonope who is missing their L cone is particularly sad because Larry is truly the funniest of the bunch. With two cones, a dichromat does not enjoy the full 3D color space that a trichromat sees, but rather they see a two-dimensional slice of that three-dimensional color space. All of the colors that aren't on that slice are still visible to the dichromat, but they perceive them as colors that are on that slice. 
Dichromats therefore have color vision deficiency, which you might know better as color blindness. Or Daltonism. Thanks, John. Anomalous trichromats still enjoy three-dimensional color space, but in one of those dimensions, they have particularly lower resolution or density of colors that they can distinguish. That means that overall, they still see a fraction of colors that a typical trichromat can see. There are also three types of anomalous trichromacy, um, protonomaly, deuteronomaly, and tridonomaly, depending on which of their cones is being clingy. Protans and dutans, whether they're dichromats or anomalous trichromats, are said to have red-green color blindness, whereas tritans have blue-yellow color blindness. And to correct a major misconception, these are not the names given to these conditions because those are the colors of confusion, necessarily, but because they are the names of the opponency channels that are affected by these conditions. In fact, as a protan, I am much more likely to confuse blue and purple or orange and green than I am to confuse red and green. Overall, uh, red-green color blindnesses are about 300 times as common as blue-yellow color blindness, although with a resurgence of blue-yellow color blindness, one could say that we are experiencing a tritan epidemic. So dichromats have severe color blindness, whereas anomalous trichromats have a range of severities depending on exactly how close their stooges are getting in the spectrum. Some of those cases can be so mild that they essentially go undetected for the person's entire life. Kind of like my first YouTube video. Now importantly, none of those colorblind people see in black and white. If you want that, you need to find yourself a monochromat or an achromat. Monochromats only have one cone and achromats rely only on their rods. And together, they see more or less in black and white or sepia tone or pink scale. I mean, how would we know, really? But these types of color blindness are also extremely rare, affecting only one in about 30,000 people. And if Pokemon cards have taught me anything, the rarity means that they are super valuable. The more common forms of color blindness, the dichromats and the anomalous trichromats, have a much higher prevalence, affecting one in 12 men and about one in 200 women. Why do men have it so much rougher? Well. Let's ask our old friend, Pro Gamer J. It carries down through the male gene. Oh, balls. I thought that would save me some time. Let's, let's start from the beginning. You have 23 pairs of, of chromosomes. And if your defective gene for color blindness were on one of the first 22 pairs, uh, it would be called an autosomal disease and therefore would affect men and women at similar rates. This is the case for tritan defects. However, the genes causing red-green color blindness are located on the 23rd pair, or the sex chromosomes, as they're called. They come in X and Y varieties, and depending on which sex chromosomes you have, uh, this determines your sex. When the 23rd pair is XX, the individual is female. When it's XY, the individual is male. And when it's YY, your lab technician is playing a prank on you. Because it doesn't exist? Because it doesn't exist. Pound it, Dalton. I didn't give them hands. Only the X chromosome encodes for the L and the M cones, not the Y chromosome. Females who have two X chromosomes can have two functioning genes or one functioning gene and one faulty gene, but either way, they will have normal color vision. For men who only have a single X chromosome and therefore a single gene, if that gene is faulty, they will be colorblind. Therefore, men are much more likely to be colorblind, mostly because we don't have a backup gene. A female who has a single good copy and a single faulty copy of the genes has normal color vision herself. However, she is called a carrier because for each son she has, there's a 50% chance that they will be colorblind. For the same reason, most colorblind men are very likely to have a maternal grandfather who is also colorblind. Testing if you're colorblind is, is actually pretty simple. Can you read this graph? Well, then I'm afraid you might be colorblind. Actually, the most common way is with the Ishihara test. Now, if you want to sound a bit more posh, you can call it the pseudo-isochromatic plates, or if you want to achieve the opposite effect, feel free to call them uh, bubbly color circles. You can find these kinds of tests online, and they are fairly accurate at determining if you are colorblind. However, if you want to know more about your severity and the type of colorblindness, you would go one step deeper into something like the Android app Colorblind Check, or similar mosaic tests. Keep in mind though that the accuracy of these tests is quite bad if you are taking them 
through your phone or through your computer simply due to the large variability of color settings on any given screen. Since the information regarding your type and severity of color blindness can be quite important either for job screening or for selecting the most effective type of color corrective glasses, I would recommend that you go get a actual analog test at your local eye doctor, your optometrist or ophthalmologist. They will be able to test you either with Ishihara plates or a D15 arrangement test or the gold standard anomalous scope and tell you exactly what your type and severity is. Finally, in chroma glasses. Now by now, these glasses are pretty internet famous for being the magical antidote for curing color blindness and letting people see color for the first time in their lives. Now you can watch hundreds of sensationalized videos of grown men crying if, if that's what warms your cockles, but it's important to remember that the majority of these videos are misleading at best. Now, it's understandable that Enchroma has used this viral third-party marketing to their advantage, but even they will tell you that their glasses are not a cure for colorblindness. They usually do not improve your scores in colorblind tests, they will not significantly change your life, and they will not allow you to fly a fighter jet. All that considered, they can still be pretty damn cool, despite the majority of people who try them not perceiving that strong of an effect. You just don't tend to see the videos of people who have a mediocre reaction to the glasses because those aren't the type of videos that your Aunt Lisa is sharing on Facebook. I know it's not what you want to hear, but there is no cure for color blindness. However, if you click the like button, I'll make sure that just for a second, you see blue. Time. Did I make 10 minutes? That was like two hours. Oh, I'm gonna have to edit that down.